Hey, what's up guys? Paulo Munoz here. Welcome back to another video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create the iris of an eye using fiber mesh inside ZBrush. It's a really cool technique and you can achieve very realistic effects. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are in Marmoset Toolback 4, and this is just to, uh, to give you a reference of what we can achieve. We're gonna focus on the iris, uh, not the square or anything else, but you know you can achieve something pretty, pretty decent, and I'm gonna show you how to create all the maps and textures to, um, you know, if you wanna do a real-time render, you could do that. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into ZBrush. All right, so here we are in ZBrush. This is a, a reference of the model that I created for that iris. And I'm gonna bring in some references as well. So I'm using pure ref, and I just collected some images uh, to sort of like walk you through some of the, you know, the anatomy of the iris. And that's basically what we're gonna be aiming for. All right, so let me just put that aside. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my Epic Pen. Okay, so this is just a little tool to explain a bit of the, you know, the areas that we're gonna focus on. So hopefully this doesn't turn into a very long tutorial, but uh, I'm just going to try to give you the steps and then obviously you can spend a lot more time uh, focusing on achieving the result that you want. So I just want to give you the entire workflow, uh, which, you know, if you want to do something realistic, it takes time. So I'll try to do my best to uh, explain things, but then obviously you spend more time <laughs> making it look a bit nicer. So um, we're going to focus on certain areas. So this, um, this edge here around, this is called the limbus right this area right here and this is ultimately given by the transition between the sclera and the rest of the area so we can ignore that for now um so the these three colors that i have here which are done with fiber mesh and the techniques that i'm going to show you um are the three objects or the three sub tools that make up the iris but within the iris there are certain things to to highlight just so that you are aware of uh what to aim for but you know if you're using references of course that is a lot easier so this section right here with all these weird veins and stuff like that that is the colorette and i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing it right right but it's the colorette of the iris and then you have things like let's do it with a different color um yellow here you have these things i mean this is a little bit exaggerated for this particular iris but all of these ones would be the crypt or the crypts um then you also have all of these fibers coming through and those are the contractiles furrows again not sure uh, i learned all of this in spanish so i'm just trying to um to bring them into english so uh, the contractile furrows uh, and then we have two sections or two main sections which are this section right here right and then we maybe with a different color this section right here okay so these would be the ciliary zone and then in white we have the the pupillary for uh, zone. Okay, so those are the main things that we can sort of focus on. So if I make reference, it's just purely so that you know when I talk about oh let's talk about the colorite or whatever, uh, you know what I'm talking about. So hopefully that gives you a, a brief reference. I mean there are a bunch of other stuff uh, like freckles and moles and um, you know all of that, but <laughs> we're gonna keep it simple. So. All right, that's kind of like the intro. Let's go ahead and jump straight into making the actual iris. So this is just the reference. I'm gonna show you individual pieces so that you know what they are. So these are the fibers, the fiber mesh. I'm gonna turn off all the paint now so you can see a bit better. Um, so yeah, uh, a simple trick just to, to start with a, an interesting trick. If you're using fiber mesh, you might realize that they are a little bit fussy. Um, even if you get closer to these fibers, they are a little bit fussy and that is due to the anti-alias. So if you click on AA half, you should have something a lot more cleaner or easy to see. So when you're dealing with fiber mesh, um, if you turn on your document to double the size and then go back to AA half, you will be able to see things a lot better. So this means I can just go ahead and click on double, go ahead and, hit and click yes. I'm gonna clear the canvas with control N, click and drag, and then press T to go into edit mode again, right? But now I have double the size in my document, so I'm gonna click on AA half, and then I can get closer all the way. And you see the difference is pretty clear. Hopefully that shows in the recording, but it is a lot easier to see fibers. So that's one. Uh, the second one is this, uh, which you know is the one that I use to create all those intricate 
patterns of the color aid and the crypts and all of that uh, but it's also based on fiber mesh and that's one of the coolest uh, tips that I'm gonna give you today um, this the third one is just a base and with a little bit of details and I use radial symmetry to essentially been able to do this with um, yeah with radial symmetry but I'll show you how to do that in just a second all right so to get started we're gonna use a cylinder so let's click on the tool palette click on cylinder 3d and I'm gonna make sure it is a polymesh 3d so that we can edit it I'm also gonna press shift F to actually see the polyframe and I'm gonna change to a skin shade 4 so that it's easier to see um, with the select rectangular tool which you can access by holding control and shift selecting select rectangular I'm gonna isolate one single loop something like that and if you go down to the bottom of the tool palette go to display properties I'm gonna enable double so that you can see you know it is a single element and we can also go to the geometry modify topology delete hidden okay so now we have just this bit and we got rid of the rest of the cylinder the next thing would be to flip normals and this is very very important I'll show you why we're gonna go ahead and turn off double so that you don't see the inside uh, let's go ahead and do that here so you don't see the inside of the model but if we go ahead and flip the normals we essentially take these normals of the polygons and flip them inside so that they're gonna be pointing inwards that's what we want so let's go ahead and click on flip and now you can only see the inside of the model all right now make sure that double is still off I have this in my UI here at the top um, the reason why is because if you deal with fiber mesh with double uh, Silver is gonna create fibers in both uh, directions so let me show you how that looks I'm gonna go ahead and open up the fiber mesh palette open up the modifiers and I'm just gonna click on preview and you'll see Silver is creating fibers on both sides so we don't want that right we want to make sure it's only creating fibers in the normals that we just flipped so let's turn off double and let's click on preview again and now we have the fibers pointing inwards that is that is the main thing of this trick okay so now now that we have the setup I'm actually gonna turn this off for a second and I'm gonna bring in the gizmo centered and I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this down a bit right so the less uh, area that we have in this ring the the less fibers or, or the less thickness on the fibers that we're gonna get or you know amount of fibers all right so now that we have that let's go ahead and click on preview and hold shift to place the camera around there that's it and let's go ahead and lock the camera just so that we don't accidentally move things around all right so the next thing is to adjust this fiber mesh so that we can start grooming and setting up those um, contractile furrows and and all of that all right so I'm gonna go ahead and change the base color and I'm gonna do that by selecting a white color at the base and a white color at the tip so that we can see this clearly and also reduce the number of fibers and of course this is not uh, this is not creating that circular thing that we need so we're gonna take the gravity and set it to zero and that gives us something a lot more realistic however if I switch my camera again or like unlock it and rotate around you'll see that the gravity is kind of like going all over the place and that is because of this uh, direction variation so this little slider next to the gravity we're gonna set it to zero and now we have kind of like straight lines or fibers going inwards which is exactly what we want alrighty so we are getting closer let's lock the camera again and now we can play with things like the length we can literally um, just play around how big the iris uh, the pupil is going to be or how dilated the pupil would be okay so let's do something you know standard kind of like an average um, we're gonna also turn off the twist so that they're not twisting each fiber is not twisting and we can also play around with the coverage so let's increase the coverage a bit not too much and we can reduce the fiber so the more coverage that we add the thicker this the fibers are going to be uh, which means that they will cover more ground or more area and so we can reduce the number of fibers so you can play around with those so if you want very thin fibers you can increase the number and decrease the coverage but I'm gonna do the opposite I'm gonna increase the coverage and decrease the number of particles so that way it's a little bit um, a little bit easier to handle all right so another thing that you notice here is that we have some uh, some of the fibers ending there some of them here some of the here so it's a little bit random right and that is due to this thing right here so the variations in length 
So we determine the length from this point where the fibers are growing all the way to this point. That's fine. But in, in between this range, Zbrush is using the 0.5 as in uh, variations in length to give us a, you know, a bunch of different lengths. <laughs> That's basically what it is. So I can just turn this to zero again. And now we have a perfectly rounded circle. So um, I'm going to add just a tiny bit, right? And then we can fine tune the length. OK, so this is perfect. This is what we need. However, right now, there are only three segments. So that means that each one of these fibers, so if you imagine this is being the base, right? And then you have a fiber here. Right now, what we have is something like this, right? Cut in two pieces. And that is because of the segments, right? So we have one, two, and three segments. Um, and that means that is the, it's kind of like a low resolution fiber. So when you go ahead and try to groom that fiber, um, it's going to be, you know, it's going to look kind of like a, like a jagged line like this because you don't have enough um, resolution. So in order to have something a lot more uh, organic and you will be able to, you know, do this type of things, you need to have more resolution and that is in the segment. So let's go ahead and increase that to, to 10. Not too crazy because obviously that's going to add more um, resolution and more points. But I think that is looking good and that's it. I don't think we need to change anything else. Uh, feel free to play around with this, um, with these things. You can add a tiny bit of, you know, the, the gravity um, variations, but I think it's fine as it is. Let's go ahead and click on accept. And now we have fibers that we can play around with and we have two different subtools. All right, so these fibers, I'm gonna straight away go ahead and give them some color, just fill them with this color so that you can see what I'm doing. And the next thing would be to duplicate. So we have two uh, subtools that are exactly the same, two fiber mesh. And this fiber mesh is going to be the color red that we're gonna work on. And this duplicate is just to keep it as an original in case we, you know, we wanna go back and we mess up something on the original. So I'm gonna create a folder. I'm gonna call it um, originals in case I need to do something with those. And we can go ahead and turn this off. All right, so it's just a, a duplicate just in case. All right, so to start grooming this um, iris, we're gonna click on the brush thumbnail. We're gonna filter by the letter G and we're gonna select something like the groom hair toss, right? So this one is pretty strong. Like if I do something like this, you'll see it kind of like <laughs> destroy um, things a little bit. We're gonna rotate things around so that you see the fibers are still there. It's just that they are single sided. They're kind of like pointing towards the camera. So it's hard to see. So I'm gonna undo that. This is again, this is pretty strong. If I right click or press the space bar, I can change the intensity so that it's not as strong, but it is a, you know, it is a pretty strong brush for grooming. So let's lock the camera and let's try another one. So filter by the letter G. Uh, this groom spike is pretty awesome to do this type of things. So you can do this, right? Create this type of uh, clumping effect. And this is one of the things that I want to do. However, in order to do this a lot faster and you know more efficiently, uh, I'm going to load some of my custom brushes from the Fiber Mesh Grooming Kit. I'll put a link in the description of this video as well if you, in case you want to get them. Uh, but you can follow along with the brushes that come with ZBrush. The only difference is that it's going to take you a little bit longer and you might have to fiddle with the, with the intensity, uh, this intensity and things like that. Um, but yeah, the, the brushes that I'm going to use are kind of like customized so that it is faster, but they're based on the same brushes. All right, so I'm gonna go to Lightbox, and here are my brushes that I'm gonna use. And you see, they're all dedicated to deal with fiber mesh. So I'm gonna start with the bender and the shaper. So I'm gonna start with the bender, actually, right? And this brush allows me to essentially move things around. So I'm gonna start with that, and then just try to get a, a more organic feel. Um, these ones that disappear here is just because they rotated, so I'm gonna undo that. And I'm gonna try to avoid touching the root because that's what happens. I'm gonna just move the these parts and don't worry if they kind of like disappear that's not an issue we'll just rotate around and then we'll be able to see them uh, but from this angle i want to create a bit of um you know more, more of an, an organic look i suppose all right so the next thing would be to load something like um this turbulence and the turbulence is just going to add even more variation to those fibers so you can do something similar with a brush like that come with ZBrush. Um, so this groom turbulence, it is very similar. It's just a lot stronger. So you have to change the intensity quite a bit. 
but you see it does pretty much the same thing. Like I said, feel free to use the rushes that come with Silver Rush. I'm just trying to, in order to show you the entire workflow, I want to be a little bit faster in showing you how you know how you can achieve the same result. Uh, but yeah, so now with this turbulence, you'll see it's pretty much the same. We can start getting those really in interesting and um, organic feel for the furrows and, and all these fibers. All right, so the next thing, like I said, would be I'm going to go ahead and load another brush. I'm going to use the Sharp Clumper. And this brush that I have in my custom kit, it is very similar to the uh, Groom Spikes. Okay, it's just a lot more subtle. So I can do things like this. And you'll see it doesn't grab as many of the adjacent um, yeah, fibers. So I'm going to do this kind of like clumping things together a little bit. Not too much. Again, just looking at the references, it's just a tiny bit. But this is a brush that we're going to use a lot more in the next step um, where we create the, the color red and the more intricate details. This first pass or this first layer is not as complex. Like I wouldn't spend too much time just making sure that things feel organic. So this is another cool brush to adjust from the base because it sort of propagates the effect. So if I do something around the, let's get closer here so you can see. Uh, if I do something here in the root, you'll see it sort of like propagates the effect and fixes some of those you know, twisted fibers. Okay, again, <laughs> I could spend a lot of time in here, but you get the idea. You can just follow um, some references if you already have some references of eyes and iris uh, to try to recreate the same sort of pattern of fibers. But I think this one looks all right, okay? The next thing is I want to have like a little bit of contrast in case, you know, just to know where are the areas that are a little bit uh, darker. So I'm going to append a cylinder Right, and this cylinder, I'm gonna get out of solo, go into the gizmo. I'm gonna scale this down in the y axis, and I'm gonna push that down so that we can sort of match what we're doing. Something like that is fine. Um, and this is purely as a, as a reference of where to create the eye and all of that. So I can actually uh, change this and maybe go into solo mode. I'm gonna go to the C modeler, and you see we have a bunch of uh, you know edge loops here that we don't really need. So I'm gonna right click on an edge loop go to delete, edge loop complete, and I'm just gonna delete all of these edge loops just by clicking on them like so. And then right click on an edge, I'm gonna select insert and single edge loop, and that allows me to create the pupil. So let's get out of solo, click and drag, and let's go ahead and establish the pupil around, around there, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and hold the Alt key and tag all of these polygons. All of these things that I'm doing are with the similar brush. Uh, this button that you see here, my UI, is just a custom macro, but it's just a, it's just a matter of pressing B, M, Z, and then you have the Z modeler selected. All right, let's go into solo mode. Uh, so with these ones tagged, I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna use the Q mesh and polygroup all. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but let's use that. Click and drag, and I'm just gonna extrude this to this point. Not all the way, otherwise it just creates an issue. And that's going to be my pupil, OK? All right, so now I'm going to turn off the, the ring that we used to create those fibers. And I'm just going to go ahead and give it a dark color, right? Um, we could actually just you know, give it a, a different color later on, but this is just to, to have a reference of where the pupil is and all of that. So that's all good. OK, so the next thing would be to create the, the thickness of these fibers. We're going to come back to this, this blue uh, subtool, but let's go ahead and do another one where we're going to create the more complex shapes. So we're going to go back to the ring. Let's go to frame. I think I've lost it. Here we go. <laughs> so here is the rim. Um, and let's go to fiber mesh. And let's click on preview. It's going to remember the last thing that we did. So we have uh, pretty much the same thing as before. This time, what I'll do is I'm going to increase the segments a tiny bit so we can twist things even more. Um, and I'm going to increase the coverage as well. So we end up with like thicker pieces or thicker fibers. Hopefully, you can see they're a little bit different. Um, and the rest, we can also use the scale tip to reduce the size of the, of the tip of those fibers okay and maybe we can even increase the number of fibers as well just a tiny bit okay now if we go ahead and create these fibers we will end up with just a slightly different version of what we had before but in order to um, you know 
to make things a lot easier for us, we want to have different polygroups so that we can isolate uh, all the different bits and pieces. So the easiest way before we create this, uh, don't worry, it will remember what we're going to be doing, um, is to go back to this, to this piece right here. I'm going to turn on double just temporarily so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to enable polyframe and you see we have all of these points or all of these um, you know, faces that we can assign different polygroups. So before I go ahead and do that, I'm going to divide this one time, right? Which makes things a lot thinner. And then I'm going to delete lower. So just by doing that, we get closer. We end up with a lot more um, subdivision, basically, or like double the subdivision. So let's select the C modeler just by pressing B, M, Z on the keyboard, or from here, this one right here. And I'm going to right click on this edge and I'm going to click on delete. Edge loop complete. Pretty much what we did with the other cylinder. Okay. So now that's working exactly what we wanted. All right. So that's pretty much what we need. Now we need to assign a polygroup for every single, you know, face. We could do that manually, but it will take a, a long time. So the easiest way would be to go to the polygroup sub palette here and click on this group by normals. So this is going to assign a different polygroup depending on the angle of the difference in the angles of the normals. So if we click group by normals, nothing's gonna happen. But if we change the maximum angle tolerance to something like one, click on group by normals, now we have everything with a different color. So this is really important for the next step so that we have the ability to isolate them. So let me just show you what that means. Let's go ahead and turn off double. Remember, that's very important so that we only have fibers going inwards. And let's go ahead and click accept, all right. So now we created another set of fibers, right? But each one of those clumps, let's say, have different polygroups. So that's going to be a lot easier to manipulate. So let's go ahead and open up the left panel here. And oops, let's bring in the brush palette. I already had it there. And we're going to scroll to the auto masking palette. OK, so this mask by polygroups is the one that we're going to use with some of the um, grooming brushes. I'm going to turn off the line so that we don't get distracted with that. Um, we can leave everything on, but I'm just going to concentrate on this. So let's go ahead and also lock the camera. And I'm going to bring in the brush that I already had, uh, which is this sharp clumper. Again, you can use something like groom spikes if you want. And I'm going to increase the brush size a little bit. Again, this is what this brush does, right? Which is pretty cool. Now, the issue that we have, we have two things. The, the issue is that even if I click the blue one or this uh, pink, polygroup, Zebras is still going to grab everything. That's where the first kind of like fix of this workflow comes into play, which is this auto group um, or auto masking by polygroups. So if I take this slider all the way to 100, now Zebras is going to restrict the effect of whatever brush we have selected to the first polygroup that we touch. That's the reason we have all of these colors. So if I click on the yellow one, I can only tweak the yellow one. Great. Now the second issue we have, now we solve the kind of like this, this problem, we can easily do that. But the second problem is that, you know, we cannot see really from this angle, at least what is happening, right? So let me undo that. So the fix for that would be to use a really cool technique, which is going to give these, um, these fibers a little bit of thickness dynamically without changing the actual topology or without changing this object to a fiber mesh. So I'm going to try to get closer here to see, to show you what this is going to do. Now we have in a total of 73,000 points, which is quite a bit. So, but it's not crazy. So let's go ahead and open up the geometry sub palette, click on dynamic and dynamic. What it does is going to give you um, a subdivided version of whatever you have selected, right? So it's kind of like giving you the preview of how things would look like if you were to actually subdivide with the subdivide button. But this dynamic subdivision also has the ability to add thickness and that is the key. So let's go ahead and take the smooth subdivision all the way to zero. We don't want to subdivide this and instead increase the thickness of each fiber. So now we have thickness. So we have like at least like a cube that is being extruded. You can play around with that. And the crazy cool thing about this is that this is a dynamic thing. So it is still a fiber mesh and you can manipulate this object like if it is a fiber mesh, right? But you have the thickness. And what's even more important is that because it is a dynamic um, effect, it's being applied after you do the effect. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna squash the, the volume. So you maintain the volume all the way from the root to the tip of these fibers. 
So that's really, really cool. All right, so that's <laughs> that's pretty much it. So a couple of quick fixes. Uh, make sure that um, the mass by polygroup is enabled. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and start doing this. And this is what creates the the colored of the iris, right? So that's what I that's exactly what I did for the other iris or the one that I show you as an example. And but you can see with this brush, it's a lot easier to just give them this sort of clumping effect. Um, so what I what I'm aiming for here is to create again the clumps, but make them feel quite organic. And this sort of like if you look at the reference, let me just bring the reference again. Right. If you look at the reference, this is obviously something that is going to depend uh, on the type of iris. If it is like a brown or light um, blue or green iris, but this is probably a good reference. So the color, this is what I'm trying to achieve. So these kind of like interconnected thicker fibers all around. Okay. So that's why I'm using this clumping tool to bring them all together, like because um, that's kind of like what is happening here. There's a bunch of these fibers uh, clumping together and then um, kind of like retracting or being a little bit more clever than my explanation, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so this is what I'm trying to achieve. I'm going to click on the lock camera as well. And I'm probably not going to have time to do the entire, you know, the entire iris. But as I said, I just want to show you all the, all the steps and, you know, the rest is pretty re repetitive. What I'm doing is just a matter of like sitting down with some music and uh, yeah, and, and play around with this. And of course, if you have a good set of images that you have found as as reference that would be incredibly useful because obviously you, you'll try to replicate this type of crypts like these holes in here the crypts of that area of the color right so i think you get the idea right i'm gonna i'm gonna do this bit and just leave it there to show you what the next step would be um one thing that i would say you can pay attention to is the the ends like how this thing end so that they're not like floating around. Try to connect them like what I'm doing, let's say between this area, this, um, this pink and then blue area. So try not to have like spikes of clumps that go like this, right? So this is not ideal. Instead, try to, if you, let's say, take this one that goes in like that, and then you take this one and try to match them together. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. So this would be the idea. So it feels like there is a continuous flow because ultimately it's like a, like a muscle, right? Pay attention to those things. Uh, you can use other brushes like, again, if you don't have the fiber mesh grooming kit, uh, you can use things like uh, maybe the, I think the, the, the groom hair toss should be okay. And we can reduce the intensity quite a bit, just like do little notches. But there is a brush in the grooming kit that is called the notch brush. And that one is pretty good for this specific thing. So the nudger. So if I double click on that, I can just nudge the fibers. Um, and this is a global setting, the auto masking by Polygroup. So I just need to load it and I know that, you know, it is working already with the Polygroups. All right, so I'm just nudging these things in place. This one is pretty subtle, but when you're trying to do this type of details, it's all about the subtlety. Now, another thing that um, you can try to do uh, with another brush that I'll show you the equivalent in ZBrush, um, which is this declumper. So this declumper, what it does, it basically what the name says, it takes the clumps and it just declumps them. So it just kind of like resets the original. So you can do that in certain areas just to kind of like open up other spaces like here, right? So if we want, we can just turn off these mass by polygroups and we can get closer so you can see what this is doing. So this declumper, um, I can target an area like this, right? And ZBrush is going to push away the fibers, like a, an inverse inflate that could be really helpful for these type of things to open up those spaces. Um, so in ZBrush, the equivalent would be something, I mean, not in ZBrush, but the, the ones that come with ZBrush, uh, you can use something like, let me just, let me just think, <laughs> um, I, I guess the, the groom blower, you can use that and then just hold the alt key to invert. So, oh, or, or no, no need for that. Yeah, you can use this one. This is pretty much the effect that I'm, that I'm after, right? Um, let's go back to the declumper because this one is a little bit more subtle. Again, some of these brushes, I focus on create subtle effects, which is ultimately what I wanted for uh, being able to groom these fibers with more precision. 
but like I said, you can do everything that I'm showing you with the brushes that come with Sirius. It might just take you a little bit of time to, to get them right, but yeah, totally can do that. All right, so that's another effect. And hopefully you can see if I turn off Polyframe, how this start to look a lot more realistic and a lot, a lot more interesting. So again, I'm not gonna go through, <laughs> through the entire iris, just wanted to show you all the steps. So I'm just gonna jump into a very quick time-lapse trying to complete this, but you don't have to sit here <laughs> and watch the entire thing. I'm gonna use the same tools and the same process that I just showed you. So I'm gonna jump into a quick time-lapse now and I'll see you when this is done. <laughs> All right, so that's, um, you know, after a bit of work, <laughs> this is where I um, where I landed. So the next step would be to turn this into something that we can sculpt. Now, at this point, you can just keep it like this and then just play around with things like the, uh, the dynamics of division and the dynamic thickness, if you want, and then just sort of like overlap them together. So let me turn off the polypaint for everything and this uh, fire mesh as well. And you'll see it is looking pretty good. Um, I want to select this and actually rotate the camera around and and we can play as, as well with the with the position so i'm going to use something another brush um i'm going to use the the shaper so the shaper is the equivalent to let's go to the grooming brushes um to something like the groom hair long it's pretty similar so it's it's just a very basic brush to give shape to the the volume so i'm going to use that to just push things up um like this so you could do that and that sort of like brings things to the front. So I'm just pushing it by clicking very subtle, um, subtle movements. Um, and this also kind of like gives me this extra um, frizziness <laughs> of, the, of the fiber. So if you don't want to do that, let me actually undo that. If you don't want any of that, instead of using this brush, um, oh, there's, there's something else that I, I'm going to show you. So if I just click on it, it automatically tries to go on top of the fibers because that's the that's the behavior of this brush. Um, but if you want to control this a little bit more, let me just show you what you can do. All right, so that's kind of like what I wanted and it's, it's all right. And it's just like a little bit more on top, but see how it just gives me all this kind of like freezy effect. So let's go ahead and undo that to this. Um, and if you want to avoid that, that has to do with a tool that is, or a slider that is in the fiber mesh. So I'm going to click on the fiber mesh um, sub palette here under the brush palette, and it has to do with this col front collision tolerance. So that's what this brush is doing. It's trying to um, avoid the collision between whatever we have um, visible. So I'm going to set this front collision to five or something very tiny. And then if I do this, you'll see there's not that many, you know, frizziness. There's still a little bit of them happening. Um, but it's a lot less. If I get rid of it completely, there shouldn't be, yeah, there shouldn't be an issue, right? So you can play around with that value. So if you want to maintain that clumpiness. Um, so yeah, let's just do that. I'm going to push this up. There we go. And we could do exactly the same thing. This is a, um, a global setting. Um, we're going to go to the fiber mesh, to the previous one, and then do the opposite. Let's turn on polyframe so that we can see it. Um, looks like we have an extra one. Oh yeah, the originals. <laughs> Alrighty, so I can take this and just push it down as well. And this brush tries to preserve the length of the fibers. Again, it's similar to what the groom, uh, to the groom stronger or the groom hair long um, that comes with zebras tries to do. All right, but then we can sort of adjust the shape a little bit in here. Alrighty, um, this is also a brush that we can use to adjust uh, if we go ahead and give this. A different color right so that you can see um it helps us just the the reach of this of this zone so we can extend the ciliary zone a little bit more or just tweak it like that right so again it's all about subtleties and tweaks um depending on the reference that you're using it might be completely different some of them are really thick uh, some of them are barely visible so i'm just giving you kind of like a 
very average <laughs> type of iris. Now the next tip is um, is something that I would prefer using. I like to combine the use of fibers with some more sculpting brushes. So you can leave it like this, and this already gives you a pretty decent, you know, look for an eye if you look at it from the distance, it is pretty decent. You can do another layer of fibers and just focus on more intricate details. Uh, but the next is or the next tool or the next tip is something that would help you in the sculpting process. So let's go ahead and take this one, duplicate it, right? I'm gonna hide it temporarily, go into solo mode. So I have an exact duplicate of those fibers. Right? So what I want to do is go to let's turn on polyframe as well. I'm gonna go to the dynamic palette and this is where I can control Again, the thickness. So this is no thickness. This is with lots of thickness. So I'm going to try to find a nice balance for the thickness um, so that I can see the holes, basically. But that is thick enough so that these parts right here, when I dynamesh this, is going to actually uh, merge together. So we can actually sculpt with thickness. <laughs> so let's just add this. All right. I think this one is fair enough. I'm going to go ahead and click on Apply. Right? And when we apply this, or when we actually affect the geometry that comes from the fiber mesh, we are locking in those changes. So now this mesh is not going to react to the grooming brushes anymore. It's just a normal, um, a normal mesh. We can clip it. We can, you know, dynamesh it. We can do anything that we want. But if we use something like, you know, the sharp clumper, we're going to ruin things. Right? It's not going to behave as a fiber. So that is why. I use dynamic and then when I'm, once I'm ready, I'm going to apply the dynamic so that I can turn into a mesh. So now I can easily create a single polygroup that is with control W. That's the shortcut for that. And we can go to the dynamesh palette or sub palette here. And I'm going to click on dynamesh just that to see what it gives me. And this is a pretty decent cool result for a sculpting iris, right? Of course, you can control all the resolution. but this is just to give you an idea, right? So let's undo that. I'm going to do a bit more resolution. So that's a bit more decent. I think this one will be OK. And we still have some gaps in here, but I'm going to use a inflate slider from the deformation palette. I'm going to click on inflate and I'm going to push that like that and then click and drag with control to redynamize the whole thing. And now we have something with thickness that we can literally spend some time refining just as a sculpting brush or a sculpting subtool, sorry. So that's what I prefer to do. It's like a nice combination between using the fibers to add those really tiny um, details or fibers for the first pass. And then the second one, you can choose either or, right? You can just go with fibers or you can do this uh, technique to sculpt things. So the reason I like this specific technique is because once I have something as a blocking that I like, I can increase the resolution of the fiber mesh object, click and drag, and then I would have more resolution to add details. So at this point, I will also like to go to the other fiber mesh, the first one that we created, the blue one, right? And this is still a single sided mesh, right? Very thin fibers. We can do the same thing we did for the previous one uh, without necessarily applying the dynamic subdivision, but we can definitely enable that and we can add thickness to it. So we end up with some thicker lines that we can see. And, and what's cool about this technique as well is you'll see that this is pretty jagged. Um, you know, you can very clearly see the subdivisions of the fibers, but if we enable a little bit of subdivision smoothness, we can smooth this out and, uh, you know, play around with the thickness. Um, and if anything, we can turn off this post subdivision slider. So now all of these fibers are going to be pretty smooth, right? Um, this post subdivision slider, what it does is just applies the subdivision after or before. So just by clicking on this, you can change from a very sharp result to uh, a much more smoother. Now, this is really cool because these are still fibers. We're just previewing it how they will look if we decided to apply the the dynamic, but for the purpose of what we want to do, which is create a set of maps and textures, this is is not a problem. I mean, this looks great, right? So let's turn everything back on. So we now have this nice set of fibers, and you know we can actually. What I'm, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to rotate around. Let me reset this. Okay, I'm going to rotate around, and I'm just going to scale this this way. Okay, just to flatten things a little bit more. And that way I can just play around with the position and the placement. And the same thing with the with this reference. 
I'm going to add a couple more of edge loops so that when we subdivide it, we maintain this shape for the pupil. Uh, or you can get rid of it altogether. If you want like a hole to go through, let me just show you what you can do. On the other side, we can right click, click on insert, and insert something like that. I should have just checked how big the other one is, but I think this is fine. And I'm going to hold the Alt key and tag all these polygons again. Right click, and I'm going to go to Q Mesh and make sure that Q Mesh is selected. Click and drag, and it's just going to snap to the other side. And now we have this hole. Um, and then we can just adjust this if we wanted to. So right click on this edge, go to Delete, Edge Loop Complete, and there we go. So now we have a, a you know a cleaner uh, <laughs> a cleaner mesh. And then we can right click on an edge, go to Insert, Multiple Edge Loops. All of these again is with the C modeler. Click and drag, and then we can add some subdivisions manually. Do the same thing on the other side, and for the same, I'm gonna click and drag. I'll do the same, something like this for the edge and the inner edge. Control W again to assign a single polygroup, and now we can just go ahead and divide this a few times. Again, this is just going to be a sculpting base, so you can subdivide it as much as you need to. Right now, I have set it to seven subdivision levels with 3 million polygons, right? And you can use the radial symmetry. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I go ahead and lock the camera again, click on activate symmetry. I'm going to make sure that the symmetry is radial based on the axis that I'm looking at this. So in this case, it should be the Z axis, right? Now we have symmetry on the Z axis. If I click on radial, it's going to, oh, let's actually change it to the Y axis, sorry. Um, and the Y axis is the one that I need with the radial symmetry. All of these tools that I have in my UI are on the transform palette. So all of those are in here. So activate symmetry, the different axes, and the radial count is this one right here. So the radial count is how many instances of the brushes I have. So I'm going to increase that to like an odd number just to make things a bit more asymmetric. And I'm going to select the damp standard brush, for example. Let's bring back everything so I can see what I'm doing, and I'm going to start doing this type of, right? And this is just a, something to increase the, the effect, I guess. Um, we can also change to another odd number and variate all of that, and then keep going down. And I, I like to always use odd numbers, so that way it feels like, even though it is, you know, symmetrical, uh, using odd numbers, it just makes it feel a bit more realistic, more organic. That's it, all right? So we have lots of details already there. Um, just for the sake of completing this, let me add some details with more radial counts, like so. All right, and the same thing goes to uh, for the other mesh. So this one right here, it needs a little bit of polishing, so we can use the deformation, we can go to polish, and that sort of softens things a bit. Uh, but then we can use something like the move brush with the accu curve. So the accu curve is under the brush palette. Let me just clear this up. Go to the curve and enable accu curve. And that's gonna give you a more sort of like angular or more pointy shape. So basically, if I pull this like that, this is what the accu curve is doing. If I remove it, it's a lot more, you know, a lot softer, right? So I like to use the accu curve so I can control this a little bit more. Um, you can also use the inflate brush, right? And you can hold the Alt key, push things out. So it's kind of like an in inverter effect of the inflate. And that's what I can use to, you know, increase these gaps here on so these scripts of the iris. So, or, um, you know, I can create new ones by, with a smaller brush size, do the same thing here, like that. Or I can use the move brush as well, and then just push things in. You can also use masking brushes to do that. Um, but yeah, I think you get the idea. I'm going to use the damp standard brush, and I'm going to hold the Alt key to invert the effect. And I'm going to start adjusting this. I mean, this is getting into like real, you know, smaller details. And like I said, if you want even more details, uh, I would probably just stick with the with the fiber mesh version, right? Um, but I think this one works really well as a as a starting point. Okay, so let's say that we've completed the iris. I kind of like rushed through this one just to show you the steps, and this is already a long tutorial. But um, once you have your meshes, you can keep subdividing these, right? You can have as many 
you know, subdivisions as you want because we're not going to optimize it. What we're going to do is take a couple of screenshots or, or textures from what we have in the canvas and that's what's going to give us the kind of like real-time um, version of the, of the iris. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to switch to the Skin Shade 4. I'm going to click on the Standard Brush and I'm going to click on Lazy Mouse to turn it off. That is on the Stroke Palette lazy mouse or just press the, the L on your keyboard. I'm also going to turn off Z add, which for you guys would be under the draw palette Z add here. So now this brush has no effect in the distance or the depth and I'm going to enable RGB. Again, RGB will be on the draw RGB. So now this is a painting brush. So I can just select a white color. I'm going to fill everything with white. So all the subtools, so the three subtools that I have, I'm going to fill them with white and then select the base. And let's go for a kind of like a brownish eye because the, the, the example that I created was uh, like a blue eye. So I'm going to click on Fill Object. Uh, I want to make sure that the intensity is set to, yep. Everything is going to be brown to start with. Um, and then we can use things like the ambient occlusion. So if I open up the Z plugin palette and I'm going to select, yep, yeah, this is the one that I have selected. I want to click on AO or ambient occlusion compute. And that's the the button that I have here on my UI, so I can click on that, and that will compute an ambient occlusion based on what we have here. So let's compute that, inverted the mask, so holding control and click. Let me just do it again. <laughs> I was doing a little bit. This is the type of things that um, I tend to do like a, almost like a second nature, but compute to get the, the ambient occlusion. I'm gonna hold control and click once to invert the canvas, and then you can go to the masking palette as well, and you can click on hide mask or view mask so that you don't see it. And then we can select something, something darker and fill object. So I'm just filling the object with that color. Um, that's about it really in terms of the color. That's the same, the same process for the, for the rest of the fibers. So with the fibers, we can do the same thing. We can maybe change the, the stroke to a spray and a different alpha just to add variation. And if you don't see um, the effect straight away in the in the fibers, I mean it is working here. But if for some reason you don't see it, actually, I'm gonna turn off dynamics so it's a little bit faster. But if you don't see the effect straight away, or you cannot reach, let's say, the the roots of the fibers, um, it's because the fibers is uh, the fibers have like some automatic masking. So this one right here. So the auto mask uh, mesh, sorry, not that one, auto mask fiber mesh. So if you turn this off, you will be able to just paint the roots quite easily. Otherwise, ZBrush automatically mask things out. All right, so I think that's, that's working all right. I'm gonna go back to this one and start playing around with variations in color. I'm gonna insert a little bit of a yellow, some yellow bits. Uh, and then I'm gonna select the bottom one the one that is just a subdivided mesh. Um, we still have the radial symmetry, so that will make it a lot easier. And I'm just going to add some darker colors, especially going closer to the pupil, like so. Go back to this one. Uh, hang on, let's select that one. And also, we can enable radial symmetry just to be faster with this. All right, let's turn that off again. and go back to adding some details with, with color. Again, I'm, I'm kind of like rushing through all of these, but hopefully you can see how powerful this technique can be and you can create lots of these ones. You can add variation. So uh, for example, if I wanted to, I can isolate this one, right? And, and use the poly paint. I'm gonna go to poly paint, click on adjust colors, and then you can adjust the colors and the intensity of the iris. And so you can generate a bunch of variations like that and create a bunch of different irises. All right, so that's the point of like texturing. Of course, you can do a lot more, you know, a lot more work on this. You can also use the masking tools here, for example, to do um, mask by peaks and valleys. If you click on that, it's going to automatically mask a section that then you can, I'm gonna use a blue color just to show you what it does, right? So you can target specific areas. So that might be an interesting one. If I invert this, the same thing. You can target some areas um, that are on mask. So let's see. Maybe we can add a little bit of contrast as well. Anyway, I can spend lots of time <laughs> uh, in here, but let's 
let's finish up this tutorial with uh, what you might be interested in, which is uh, converting this into textures that you can actually um, export and use in something like Marmoset or Blender or any other rendering software. Alrighty. So what I want to do is change my the size of my document. So let's go ahead and do a quick save just in case, because I haven't done that. Um, I'm going to turn off this proportional edit or proportional uh, document or constraint proportions, which is in the document palette for you. So that one right here, that's what I just turned off. And in the slider, let's go ahead and set this to be 124 by 124. And this will be the final size of your texture. So if you want something really, really big and you have lots of details, go for like 2K or 4K. I'm going to resize it to 124. And I'm going to click on yes, hold control and N to clear the canvas, click and drag, and then enter edit mode. There we go. Um, one thing I want to do just to make sure that I frame it correctly is to select the background. So in the background under the document, I'm going to select a black color. It doesn't really matter. You won't see that. And that's it. And then let's use these tools here to sort of like zoom out a little bit. Or we can click on actual or half. Doesn't matter. Um, and then let's frame it. Maybe a little bit less than that. So I just like to have a bit of a gap. Alrighty. So this next step is super important in case um, you haven't done it. Once you set uh, the framing of your iris in a square document, the size doesn't matter, it's up to you. I'm going to lock the camera. That's really important because if I do one render of like the normal map, for example, and then I change things slightly, it's not going to match. So make sure that the camera stays locked. Uh, you can also save the camera if you wanted to, but I think it's, you know, this is, is, is fine. So the first thing I want to do is create the albedo color. So for that, I'm just going to go to the texture palette. Let's drop that here on the left hand side now. And in the texture palette, let's actually get rid of, this is getting out of hand. So I want to delete or remove some of these palettes. Oops. Let's go to texture, drop it in there. Alrighty. So let me clear all of that. Um, the first one is the albedo. So if I click on shaded document, right, Cirrus is going to grab exactly what you can see in here. If I click on grab on shaded document, Cirrus is going to grab the same thing, but it's going to ignore any material. So that's the one that you want, right? So this is just pure color, the grab on shaded document. The next one would be to generate uh, an ambient occlusion, right? If you wanted to, um, and you can do that by simply adding masks around. Um, this is something that I don't really mind doing somewhere else, but you can merge them all together and create it there. Uh, I'm just going to show you the basics, <laughs> basically. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention is that ZBrush is going to grab the document at whatever size we have available. So if I hover over this texture, you'll see in the bottom left of the actual image that is set to uh, 512, right? And that is because our document size is 1024, but we set this canvas size to half the size. So in other words, to a half. So before we grab that, that document or that texture, I'm just going to click on actual. That will give me the 1024 by 1024 version. And let's go ahead and also select my fibers. Just want to check that dynamic is on. Because remember when we were um, texturing it, uh, we changed that as well. So now that I see this, I might need to add some variations of color in here. But anyway, <laughs> we can do that in Photoshop. So now that we have the right size, I'm going to click on grab unshaded doc. That should give us the right amount or the right size. So now that is a 1024 by 1024 image, right? That we can export. Um, the next one that is going to grab all those details is the normal map, right? So for the normal map, all we have to do is go to the material palette, click on the material thumbnail, and we're going to select normal RGB. That is it. That's all we have to do. Um, and in order to grab this one, we can click on shaded document. The difference is that if we click on, on shaded document, Sirius is going to grab you know, the texture because it's ignoring all the material. And this RGB color, it is ultimately a material or a matcap. So I'm going to use the shaded document for that one. And now we have the normal map. We have the ambient occlusion. Um, and then if you want to generate, sorry, not the ambient occlusion, the the albedo. If you want to generate the ambient occlusion, um, I would recommend to collapse this together. So I'll show you why. Um, just so that when Sivers computes the ambient occlusion, it takes into account all the meshes together. Um, or you can do it individually and then keep them as masks. But I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to leave all the pieces that I need available. I'm just going to click on the apply subdivision level. 
So I'm going to click apply, right? So now we have subdivisions in the in the fibers, and these are not fibers anymore, and this one as well. So let's go ahead and click on merge visible, and this merge is purely to extract the ambient occlusion. I'm going to click merge visible. It might take a little while. All good. So this is the result. So we have seven million polygons. So all the subtools together, apply dynamic subdivision, dynamesh, all of the pieces that we have now are comprised of, or they're just a single object really, and we have 7.4 millions. Uh, but what is cool about this is if I go to the skin shade four and I hide my color, so this is what I have, um, I can go ahead and actually fill it with white. Again, this is a different tool, so I'm not messing with the actual um, iris. We can go back to the actual iris and because we have the undo history just so we can preserve these fibers i'm gonna click undo to go back and have this as dynamic subdivision just in case and here we go so this is the merge together i'm gonna click on compute this might take a little while because it's computing you know seven million poly polygons after all um, but this is going to give us an ambient occlusion that is a mask right so what's cool about this is that the mask itself is just a black and white image right or a black and white mask um, and we can control the amount of the darkness or the lightest or the lighter values in an ambient occlusion just with the mask so let's give it a, a few more seconds and wait until this is finished there we go and now we can go ahead and if you want to see the, the actual effect of the ambient occlusion you can go to the render palette and let's move this out of the way and you can click on flat and flat is just going to give you the unshaded version, right? Without any material, purely the ambient occlusion that we have, which is a mask, right? So this is the ambient occlusion. It's as easy as that. Let's go back to preview. So if we click on grab unshaded dock, what we're going to get is that ambient occlusion. So Sivrush is taking a screenshot of everything that we have right now without any effect or any effect of the, of the material. So now you have the basic three things that you need. Um, for recreating this iris or this eye in outside um, rendering software. So we have the normal, we have the ambient occlusion, and then we have the, the color. All right, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I know it is a long one, but hopefully the techniques and tools that I share in this video are of help. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or just show me the result that, that you got from um, following this tutorial. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Yeah.